I'm Dr. Paul Niskanen, Associate Professor of Theology at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I'll be your professor for this Catholic course. We're going to be looking at the God of the Old Testament, or the image of God that we get when we read and look at the pages of the Old Testament. So, let me tell you first of all a little bit about myself and my background and my interest in this topic. I've been a professor of Old Testament for about a dozen years now, and I've taught in a number of different settings, including university, seminary, as well as at parishes and even uh, diaconate formation classes. And in the course of my studies, I've encountered a lot of aversion, uh, ignorance, even sometimes hostility towards the Old Testament among Catholics. And one of the things I want to do in this course is dispel some of the darkness that seems to shroud the Old Testament and help you, help all of us, uh, come to a better understanding of what these texts are actually saying and what place they have within the Catholic tradition. One of the things that's interesting is that even among my colleagues, I find some difficulty in dealing with the Old Testament. Where do we situate this? Where do we fit this in? Um, the spectrum of Catholic or Christian theology. On the one hand, some biblical scholars might, in their study of the Old Testament, want to look at it in isolation, in itself, and what it has to say to us, and don't really relate it to the rest of Christian theology. And that might give us a good idea of what ancient Israelites believed, but it doesn't really help us with what these texts mean and do for us today. So one of the things we want to look at is um, how is the Old Testament still a living text? What meaning does it have for us Christians reading it today? And even among some of my other scholars in systematic theology, there tends to be sometimes a little uneasiness with how to situate, how to place the Old Testament within that broader spectrum of Christian theology. Some simply ignore it. I've read countless works of theology in which you might not find a single quotation from the Old Testament. You simply set it aside. We can work with the new, we can work with the tradition, but this is a little too difficult or awkward, so we simply ignore it. Others might look at it as something that has been now surpassed by the New Testament or subsequent Christian tradition. And the point that I want to emphasize throughout these lectures is a point the church has constantly emphasized is that that's not the way we read the Old Testament as Catholics. It's not something we've left behind. It's something we've taken with us. Another thing to note about uh, an introduction to the Old Testament is that one can read the Old Testament in many different ways. Uh, history of the people of ancient Israel. One can also read it for its literary merit, and there are some masterpieces of literature in the Old Testament. One can certainly read it um, in that vein. But we're interested particularly in the church in reading it theologically for what it reveals to us about God, and that's going to be our primary interest and focus in these lectures. Another thing we want to do is provide some guidance uh, for reading the Old Testament, uh, some help in reading, especially the difficult passages, passages that might be confusing, uh, difficult to understand. And so we'll prov be providing some guidelines uh, for how to go about that, how to read this text as the Word of God in human words. And finally, we'll be giving a little overview, a sketch, if you will, of some key themes in Old Testament theology. What is the image of God that comes across to us in this text. Who is the God of the Old Testament? What is the God who comes across to us in these passages like? So that's the question we'll be looking at. Okay. One of the ironies uh, of our own day and age is that although we live in a time that is so formed by the rise of modern historicism, such that we frequently identify truth with historical truth. That is to say, we ask the question, did it really happen? Yet at the same time, we're often grossly uneducated about history. And I find this to be the case 
with regard to the Old Testament, one of the phenomenons that comes up quite frequently when I'm teaching is you'll have students who are so obsessed with this idea of uh, did it really happen that they equate that with truth. Now, as we get further on in this course, we'll be seeing that not all of the Old Testament is history, and not all of it is revealing historical truths, yet it is revealing truth on a profound level. I recall one student who, after teaching uh, for several weeks on Genesis, he was just racking his modern brain and couldn't get it around it and was troubled by this. He says, well, professor, that's all fine and good, but we can't really know if it's true. And what he meant by that we, was we can't really know if this happened in precisely this way. So one of the keys we need to keep in mind when reading the Old Testament is that truth is conveyed in a number of different ways. And a good example, if I can borrow one from the New Testament, is the way Jesus taught in parables. Jesus would communicate the most profound truths through parables when he tells the story, once there was a father who had two sons. And he goes on to tell the story of the prodigal son. Now one could ask, well, did that really happen? Is he really relating a story about an actual father who had two actual children and these things happened in exactly this way? And most people would recognize that the answer to that question is no. He's telling a story to make a point. And so similarly in the Old Testament, frequently we have stories to make a point. We have poetry, we have a number of different genres, which we'll be getting into more in our next lecture, but it's helpful to know up front that truth is not limited to the historical. Okay. Now, if you will, I'd like to engage in a little uh, historical exercise with you. One thing that I find very helpful to give us a more historical perspective is to do a little thought exercise of traveling back in time. Imagine yourself, a first century Christian, back in the first century AD. Do you have a Bible? Does the church have a Bible? What does it look like? The answer to the first two questions is yes, you do, but it's important to note that it doesn't look like our Bibles today. It's not nicely bound with pages in between, and it's not even that thick. It's made up entirely of the Old Testament. No New Testament. For the first generation of Christians, this was their only Bible. It's the law, the prophets, and the other writings which Jesus himself spoke of when he said to his disciples after the resurrection, everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and Psalms must be fulfilled. So the first books of the New Testament did not even exist until Paul began writing his letters around A.D. 50. So for 20-some years, there did not even exist a New Testament text after 20 years of Christianity. Furthermore, the collection of Old Testament books, the 27 books of the New Testament canon, was not definitively accepted until over 300 years after the time of Jesus. So even if you were a second or third or fourth or fifth generation Christian, you did not have the same Bible we have today. It was more a loose collection of writing scrolls, not something that was bound together in a single book and recognized as authoritative by the church. Now this might seem a, a little peculiar to us today, who are so used to having the Bible with Old and New Testaments that the church ever existed without the New, but it did, but it has never existed without the Old Testament.